Are you using Power BI? Are you confused about how Active Directory plays into this? You're not the only one. We're going to take a look at some of those items and how they figure in with Power BI and why you should care about it. That's coming up. Hi, I'm Adam Saxon, and today we're going to take a look at Active Directory and what you should be aware of when it comes to Power BI. So to get this started, Chris asks, I am investigating Power BI and Active Directory integration for a client. Could you recommend a recent resource that can provide direction, please? Chris, you're not the only one that's been asking for this. I've actually been pinged by several people over the last week or two asking very similar questions and confused about what's actually needed, where, and why. So before we get into this, the first thing I want to kind of point out right away is that this actually has nothing to do directly with Power BI itself. This is not a Power BI thing, this is an Active Directory thing, and more specifically, it's an Azure Active Directory thing. Some people ask, well, do I need to use Azure Active Directory with Power BI? Or like, how do I turn on Azure Active Directory with Power BI? And the answer is that it's already there. If you've got an account, it's in Azure Active Directory because everything runs on that. To illustrate this, let's jump to the O365 portal and take a look at how that plays in with Azure Active Directory and we'll combine that with Power BI. Okay, so what we're looking at here is just the O365 portal. If you're a free user, a lot of this is probably not gonna matter. If you're a pro user or an IT admin, uh, this is where this is important for you. Within the O365 portal, there are a couple things to be aware of. So one, you have a group of users. These are the users that are part of your organization. These are represented by an email address, and then there's passwords associated with those. And then you've also got a concept of domains within the O365 portal. These are all domains that are associated with your organization. And then if we look down under admin down below, you'll see Azure AD. Any tenant that exists is associated with an Azure Active Directory subscription. And so if you're not, if you haven't done anything, it's one gets created automatically. And that's done via this on Microsoft.com domain, as well as if you have a custom domain in there as well. All of these domains are actually controlled with inside of Azure Active Directory. Same thing with the users. And so what we care about is we want the users that are going to be using Power BI, we want them to be in Azure Active Directory. So really the question is, is how do we get them into Azure Active Directory? There's a couple different ways we can do this. The first one is really the, the simplest way to do this is just to manually add a user. So you can go in here and click new and you'll add the user here. You can do this within the O365 portal. And then once they're in here, they can sign in, you can assign them a license or they can sign up for uh, Power BI free by going to powerbi.com. Let's go to the Azure Active Directory portal. And so when you add a user in the O365 portal, that user gets added here it will show up in the Azure Active Directory portal as well. So anything that's here is what we also see from the O365 portal. Same thing from a domain perspective. If you go and add a domain or remove a domain from the O365 portal, it's affected here in Azure Active Directory. So the O365 portal is more of just like a GUI on top of Azure Active Directory. Okay, so other ways that we can get users in here. Uh, the next item is Dersync. And so Dersync, what we can do is if we go to the directory integration tab in here, you can go through steps where you can actually set up the Azure AD connect tool. And then that will actually uh, initiate the directory sync between your on-premise domain up to the cloud. And so here are the differences of why you would want one versus the other. So if you have a small organization or you want to control which users are going in, so if you only have a handful of users, maybe five or six users, going through Dersync is probably going to be a lot of effort. And so it may just be faster for you to add the user manually with inside of the O365 portal. If you have a large organization, so we'll use like Microsoft, for example, there's a lot of users there. Adding each one of those users by hand would be painful um, and not very time efficient. And so what Dersync allows you to do is it actually runs on your local domain and it will take whatever accounts that you have locally and create an account in Azure Active Directory for it and make sure that those two are synced. And you can also do password sync as well. So that's really just a quick way to get your users from on-premise into the cloud 
so that they can use whatever services are inside of that tenant itself. So Power BI being one of those. So when I said this isn't really a Power BI thing, it's in the sense that anything within that tenant or what I call like the O365 bubble or, or any of those services, they take advantage of that. So this is SharePoint Online, it's Power BI, it's CRM. As long as your user is in Azure Active Directory, that's what we care about. So we can manually add them. We can do DirSync using the Azure AD Connect tool. And the last item that's available that I'm going to talk about is ADFS or Active Directory Federated Services. And what ADFS allows you to do is really about single sign-on. So if you're inside of your organization or I'm local, like in the office, when I hit SharePoint Online or something inside of that bubble, I don't get prompted for a login page. Um, it, it just it knows my Windows token, it grabs it from the ADFS side of it and passes it to Azure Active Directory or passes it to the online services to process from a token perspective. If I'm outside of the organization, it will prompt me for a username and password, but that page is actually part of the ADFS resource and not the actual Microsoft Online login page that you would normally see. So those are three different ways of getting users into Azure Active Directory. Um, really there's two, it's manual entry or DirSync. And again, the whole goal of this is we wanna get our users in Azure Active Directory. They have to be in Azure Active Directory. If you're signing in with them into Power BI or SharePoint Online or something of that nature, it is Azure Active Directory. That has to exist within the tenant. It's part of it. It's a foundational piece that you can't avoid. It's not an opt-in thing. It is there. And every tenant has an Azure Active Directory subscription. You don't pay for it. It just exists. If you have Azure Active Directory Basic, that's it's a it's a free service. Hopefully this helps to illustrate the use of Azure Active Directory with our Microsoft Online services and why you should be thinking about it and be aware that it exists. I will also have in the description below, I'll have links to some other documentation that will help you if you do want to get DirSync and or ADFS configured. Um, I will go ahead and uh, have that in the description below for you to take a look at. And I'd love to hear your feedback. Does this help clear up some things in terms of what's actually being used from a Power BI perspective and the fact that this isn't Power BI and really it's an Azure Active Directory thing? love to get your comments. Go ahead and leave those down below. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe. Every Tuesday, I walk through an item such as this from a technical perspective where I will talk about how things work or just show how to work around things or any type of troubleshooting steps. Every Thursday, I do an information roundup where I look at the last week and kind of call out some things that I found that were interesting to me. And really, this is about you. I want to get as much out there as possible to help you be more effective and successful at the work that you do. So go and subscribe and be part of the conversation.